We also have here with us the development minister and development and trade minister uh, from the Netherlands, Mr. Tom de Bruyne. You're actually in the floor, sir. Thank you very much, and what, a, what an inspiring place uh, to be. Um, excellencies, I, I don't need to reiterate the common understanding and acknowledgement of the importance and urgency of uh, swift action on climate adaptation. Uh, once again, this has been abundantly and clearly uh, put in the latest IPCC report. Um, in addressing the climate crisis, we need to speed up our actions and consequently worldwide, we need to mobilize more climate finance as a whole and allocate more towards adaptation. Therefore, the Netherlands supports fully the UN Secretary General's call to allocate more than half of climate finance to adaptation and resilience. Actually, uh, the Netherlands provided 69% of its public climate finance over the period 2016-2019. And these are mostly grants for least developed countries. Adaptation, least developed countries, and grants will remain the focus of our climate finance. But public finance alone is not enough. So it is critical to enlarge the financing pie to do so, we need to mobilize funds from multiple sources, it has been said before, both public and private. If sufficient international public climate finance resources are deployed to mobilize this pool, it will be possible to move from the billions to the trillions required. Unlocking more private financing and expertise is key. Private sector finance can help support climate smart solutions for vulnerable communities. But to mobilize the private sector, more concrete bankable adaptation projects are needed. With the Dutch Fund for Climate and Development, we have an innovative pipeline approach to develop and scale up climate adaptation projects, which can then graduate into the investment vehicles of the fund. However, it is not just about increasing the quantity of adaptation finance. It's also about improving the quality and accessibility of adaptation finance and ensuring more of it reaches the local level, particularly to the benefit of marginalized and vulnerable groups such as women, the youth, rural farmers, and the urban poor. Finally, we need to bring out in the open the actual constraints to improve finance for adaptation and to have frank discussions on these to chart better ways forward. Learning from the least developed countries and from the small island development states on what are the adaptation financing needs and gaps and how best to meet them is critical, as the Minister of Granada has just pointed out. This will be key to contributing to a positive outcome in Glasgow and beyond on adaptation finance and to build trust among 